The story of Blender as we know it, which truly began more than 20 years ago, is nothing short of impressive. And with the recent release of Blender 4, the software is closer than ever to challenging the industry standard 3D software. It may not have reached that level yet, but it is still inspiring to see a software with such humble origins that was once in the shadows, overlooked, and underappreciated become so dominant. The open source story of Blender started in the year 1998, after Todd Rosendahl decided to found a new company called Not A Number to further develop Blender, his new project that was originally supposed to be an in-house tool for Neo Geo Studio, following the success of Seagraph Conference in early 2000. The company managed to secure an impressive 4.5 billion euros and thus Blender 2.0 was released a version that even integrated a game engine for the first time. But due to challenging sales and the ongoing difficult economic climate they had, the software didn't generate enough revenue. But that wasn't the end. Or was it? Well, if it was up to someone else, I would have said maybe. But Tan genuinely believed in his software. And that's how he founded a non-profit organization called the Blender Foundation in March 2002. And in October of the same year, Blender went open source for the first time. With a lot of cool Blender features being offered for free to the public for the first time as well, such as an LLA editor to edit animations, a video sequence editor, UV editor, and many other stuff. Fast forward a few years later, in the mid-2000s, a period that can be considered a decade of computer graphics evolution. Thanks to the updates and new releases of 3D software, even Blender has something to show for with the release of the version 2.4, which I personally consider the beginning of the road to the glory of Blender. As this user commented back in 2005 in the CG Society forums, this is the release we've been waiting for. Physics hair, fluids, animation overhaul, good job developers. You see, this release saw the birth of some of the key features that later on became part of the reasons why Blender is successful, such as modifiers, fluid dynamics, soft body dynamics and particles, and these could be used to create all sorts of effects, such as water, honey, clothes and much more. The character animation tools were also completely rewritten with a new skinning and weight painting system, as well as improved inverse kinematics and the introduction of shape keys to make both rigging and animation easier and faster. But the thing is, Blender wasn't up there yet. Around this time, we have seen a lot of evolution in the CG scene. For instance, in 2005, Autodesk bought Maya, a software that was much more advanced in terms of animation and effects capabilities. Then, in the next year, Mudbox was released, which is a software specialized in 3D sculpting. So around this time, the industry was way ahead, but Blender kept making its own little path, with the release of new features in the next updates of the 2.4 lineup, such as the improvement of the physics and simulations of the game engine, as well as the debut of the node material editor and compositor, a method to create materials and edit our renders by combining various effects presented in the form of small boxes. This approach would later on become part of the revolution that we will discover later on. But what is most important to know first is that in addition to this, sculpting and texture baking tools were also introduced to the software, but they were really basic at the time and not at the level they are at today. Blender kept being relatively stagnant for a while after that, despite the release of Blender 2.5, which saw a new user interface and the addition of fire and smoke simulations. But the fact of the matter is, it was always overshadowed by other software in the market. However, in 2011, the program made waves again after the introduction of Cycles, which is the new photorealistic render engine. What's funny about that is that originally it wasn't even supposed to exist. In an interview, Brecht van Lammel, the main coder behind it said, at a certain point I just had a lot of free time and I just started coding in my free time, my ideal render engine. 
I tried to put in some things I learned from working with the artist on the Blender Open Movie project. After half a year, I showed it to Tom Rosendell and he was interested in it. After such a release, Blender tried to go full in on the realism side of things by offering for the first time compositing tools to mix live action footage with your scenes in Blender, such as camera and motion tracking, masking, green screen keying, and improvement to the compositing nodes. And when we take a look at the likes of Ian Hubert, I think these tools, while overlooked by many, they can achieve high quality results, to a certain extent of course. Other than that, Blender stayed quiet for a while, with only minor improvements here and there. But like they say, it was the calm before the storm. Before we continue, if you are interested in learning more about how to learn 3D modeling and animation, I recommend you try Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for photography, video editing, and illustration classes, but it actually has many animation, game development, and VFX-focused stuff. For example, Next on Skillshare offers tens of classes like this one called 3DS Max 2023 for Beginners, which helps to learn the basics of Max. And if you are interested in creating characters, there are three classes, one about Blender, one about ZBrush, and one about Maya. And all of these are just from one creator. So you can access thousands of classes every month for less than it will cost you to get just one. So, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. The story of Blender underwent a major shift and turn of events in 2018, a time that Tom Rosendell once called the best period of his Blender life ever. In February of that year, they launched one of the most successful fundraisers in Blender's history the Code Quest and the Rocket Token. Their ambition was to secure enough funding to unite the core Blender developer team in a single location, to solve all the nasty technical issues that would keep Blender 2.8 from getting ready. And within a few weeks, the target was met after the Blender community showed exceptional support and generosity, and from there, a legend was born. After months of hard work, the 2.8 version was then released in July of 2019, and Blender never looked back since then, because this version is considered one of the most iconic builds of Blender, and the one that took the software to never seen before heights. It introduced a completely new interface, a new render engine, and 2D tools. But what's interesting to note is that upon its release, many Blender veterans rejected the change, like the artists who expressed with this new UI, everything has changed, and I feel like I have to learn Blender again as if I was new to it. However, on the other side of the spectrum, this change made Blender explode in popularity. The new artist-friendly user interface made the software more appealing for both beginners and experts alike, and we have also seen a rendering revolution with this version. First, we were introduced to Eevee, which brought real-time capabilities to the software and it allowed artists to see the final results of their work in the viewport instantly, without having to wait for the final render. What's more impressive is that none of the similar software on the market, such as Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, and so on, had a feature like this. Through this version, we've also seen improvements to the Cycles render engine, and the introduction of the Grease Pencil tool. However, its story doesn't start here. Originally, it was implemented by Joshua Leon, as an annotation tool with basic color and animation settings, and the 2.8 version made it evolve into its own object type and a dedicated workspace for 2D animation, which saw a lot of success in the following years, as it was used in a lot of big and small studios and movies such as Unicorn Wars, which was fully animated with it. With a success like that, Blender had to hit hard again with the 2.9 release in 2020. And that's right, they delivered again. This time, we have seen Blender's aspiration to take on Houdini, one of the best 3D software in the industry. But how can they do that, you might ask? Well, through their Everything Notes project. Just like how William Brainish, an ex-lead designer at Blender stated, nodes will allow Blender to become fully procedural, 
meaning that artists will be able to more efficiently build scenes that are orders in magnitude more complex and advanced in a short period of time. This version saw the light of day in the form of geometry nodes, which got even better in the 3.0 release. It is a system to create animations and models solely with the help of nodes. I mean just like Houdini, but of course it is not at its level. Then the simulation nodes were also added in the 3.6 version, which is a way to create custom physics simulations through only nodes, a feat that was never seen before in such software. But is it good as Houdini? Currently, the reality is it is nowhere near that. But it is still a well-received system by the 3D community and a technology that could potentially take Blender to a new stage in the future. And now with the current events, a time when Blender made it to its 4.0 version, the most recent major update it received and it has further improved almost everything already available in the software, just as the Blender website described it, a link to the future. And honestly, it might be. Because for instance, they implemented Hydra, a new render engine that could potentially elevate Blender to industry standard software, which you can learn more about in our most recent video we have made about it. Additionally, we have seen implementations of long-awaited features, such as light linking, which is a technique that we can now use to make lights only affect specific objects in our scene, which is impressive. From what I can see, Blender has a bright future, and many professional 3D artists and studios are betting on it because a lot of them started using it. And this shows how impressive it is and the potential it has, especially since it is adapting new tools and features that professionals need. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.